This camera that I have in front of me is known as the Pentax Sportmatic F. And what's special about this particular camera is the use of the M42 or universal lens mount. The M42 lens mount is a rather old screw type lens mount, but it's fascinating to see what sort of technologies that Pentax has managed to squeeze inside this particular lens mount to enhance the capabilities of their cameras released back in the day. To get a better understanding of how this lens mount work, let's take a look at how we remove and attach a lens on this particular camera. So to remove this particular lens, first we grab it and then we twist it a particular direction and now the lens is loose. We keep twisting and twisting until it releases. This kind of reminds me of trying to unscrew a bottle or a peanut butter jar and exactly this is where the name screw mount actually comes from. You can see that inside the lens mount there's a bunch of screw threads that is present and these screw threads matches with the screw threads on the particular lens that you're going to be using. To mount it back you simply have to align it and then twist it as if you were trying to screw back in a jar and it's a little bit finicky but eventually you'll get the hang of it and you'll be able to replace the lens on the camera body. This M42 lens mount is a little bit limiting in the past. In its very standard vanilla form, all it simply has to do is to put the lens onto the camera at a particular distance and allow the photographer to take the pictures. But if you take a look at many modern lens mounts or even lens mounts from the 80s and 90s from various man camera manufacturers, you will see that there's a whole bunch of levers, pulleys and uh, electrical contacts even that is present in this particular lens mount. The vanilla form of this screw mount doesn't have any of these features. So it makes photography a little bit more slow and tedious for the photographer in the past. To get a better understanding of how slow down the photography can be without these modern features, let's first set our lens to the manual mode. This lens is known as the SMC Takuma 55mm f1.8 and it's a later lens that is released by Pentax uh, back in the days of around the 60s and 70s. This lens actually have all the additional features that Pentax introduced to enhance this particular lens mount but let's for now disable these particular features by setting the lens to the manual mode. We push in this safety switch and then we click it until we see that it is in the manual setting. Now when we roll and turn the aperture ring you can see that the lens automatically resizes depending on the aperture I select. Smaller f-stop numbers result in a bigger lens opening while a larger f-stop number would close down the lens further. So this is the issue back in the day in which that the lens aperture doesn't automatically open and close for you when the picture is taken. We now have this lens in its very manual state so now let's see how a photographer was to use these particular older lenses. Firstly, select a largest aperture or smallest f-stop number on the lens. Next, Take a look through your viewfinder and start to focus and compose. The reason why we want to set the aperture to its smallest f-stop number or largest size is because for two reasons. The first thing is that a smaller f-stop number result in a shallower depth of field. With a shallow depth of field, you can more easily determine what is the point of perfect focus when you are focusing with this particular lens. The second thing is that at the shallowest depth of field, if you see that the object is in focus at this point, you're guaranteed that whatever aperture you select later down the line would have that object also appear in focus. Secondly, with a bigger size aperture or smaller f-stop number, you guarantee that more light will actually enter the camera. This gives you a brighter viewfinder in the camera which allows you to be able to focus better, especially in very dark environments. The next step is for the photographer to meter. By meter, it is to ask the camera to be able to determine exactly how bright the scene is and from there assist the photographer in selecting the correct shutter speed so that the photo can be taken with proper exposure. You could do this with external light meters but for Pentax they actually have an internal light meter present inside the camera body to allow for the photographer to not have to carry an additional equipment. To meter in the past, what you may have to do is to stop down the lens by turning to the correct aperture that you would like to take your picture at. Now the lens is stopped down and it reflects exactly how much light will actually enter the camera when the picture is taken. Now the light meter is able to determine exactly what shutter speed for proper exposure. The photographer then selects the correct shutter speed, 
wind the camera and then proceed to take the picture. So congratulations, you have actually taken your first picture. Now you're going to have to repeat the same process for the rest of the pictures until the roll runs out. Open up your aperture, focus and compose, then close down your aperture, meter by selecting the correct shutter speed, wind your camera and then take your picture. So this is a little bit tedious because the photographer has to constantly turn the aperture ring to open it up, then they have to compose and focus, then they have to close it down, and so it is a little bit uh, very tedious process for the photographer to constantly having to turn the aperture ring. If you think about the process of taking the pictures, the only time when the aperture needs to actually physically close down is when the picture is being taken. All other periods, for example, focusing and composing or even metering can actually be done with the aperture completely wide open. So let's take a look at exactly how Pentax implement these additional features. One of the first features that the Pentax introduced with some of their lenses is known as the auto diaphragm system. And it is usually printed very prominently with a lens that has a manual and auto switch. In fact, some camera manufacturers actually have an auto word that is printed on the lens barrel. Auto doesn't really necessarily mean autofocus, but instead it is known as auto aperture diaphragm, which is something we take for granted with many of our modern lenses today. To understand exactly what uh, is going on with an auto diaphragm, first let me switch this particular lens to the auto mode. You will see now that when the lens is in its auto mode, no matter what aperture that I select, the aperture remains fully open. You can also see that behind this particular lens, there's actually a nice tiny little silver pin that's sticking out of the lens. When I touch and push this pin uh, and select an aperture that has a higher f-stop number, you can see that the aperture actually begins to close down. When I release it, the aperture blades open up. So this is an auto diaphragm because the lens can automatically close and open. This pin actually engages with a particular uh, pushing thingy or a switch of some sort located at the very bottom of this lens mount. When you wind the camera and when you press the shutter button, you will see that this particular uh, lever or part is actually pushing on this silver pin and when it pushes on this silver pin, the lens would close down and once the photo is done taken, it would release this pin and the lens would open up completely. So this is what we mean by automatic diaphragm because now the diaphragm control is actually done by the camera, not by the photographer by twisting the aperture ring. We now have another issue that we need to tackle because you cannot meter with the camera lens completely wide open in these older cameras. The reason being is because if let's say you are selecting an aperture for on this lens, for example, f4, what happens is that the aperture is actually still completely wide open when it's mounted on this camera, but you're telling the camera to take a picture at f4. So this means that there's actually a reduction of two stops approximately uh, of light that is entering the camera when the picture is taken. In other words, the camera is seeing uh, the amount of light entering the camera when the lens is at f1.8, but when the photo is actually going to be taken, you are asking the camera to close down to f4. So this causes some issues because this means that the amount of light entering is less than what is being reflected by the light meter, and this will cause underexposures when the picture is taken. So to solve this, in the old days, most cameras actually have something known as a stop down lever that is printed or mounted on this particular camera over here. When you're focusing and composing, in order to meter, you push up on this particular lever. When you push up on this particular lever, you would start to see that the lens actually closes down and this reflects to the camera exactly how much light is entering the camera. Once you're done with this particular setting, you can simply wind, meter for your scene, and then take your picture and release. So you can continue taking your pictures like so. It would be great if we can eliminate this particular stopping down step because currently right now our photographic uh, taking photo process is that we first need to compose and focus, select the aperture that we want, stop down, meter, wind the camera and then take your picture. If we can eliminate this stop down step, it will be great for us to be able to make it more convenient for the photographer to take the pictures. 
fortunately for us there's actually a way or method to allow the camera to be able to meter when the aperture is fully open if you're able to convey the information of what aperture the photographer has selected on the lens to the camera body the camera is able to use certain electronic techniques to be able to compensate for the different aperture size to be able to meter correctly this is done actually by two levers that's present on the camera's lens you can take a look over here that this pentax lens actually have two additional lever one tiny rectangular one over here and one small square one that's located right here you can see that if I were to turn the aperture ring, the small rectangular lever actually moves left to right and the square piece actually still remains stationary. Notice also that when I rotate this particular lens in whatever angle, the angular distance between the square piece and the rectangular piece will always remain constant. And this is important because we are using a screw mount rather than a bayonet mount. So this additional square piece is actually important. They engage with the lens mount on the camera body by these two little feeler levers located on the lens barrel. One is located over here at the very bottom of the camera body and the second one is located somewhere near the top half of the camera. This is because the square piece is necessary because it acts like a reference point for the measurement. When you mount this particular lens on the camera body, there is a tendency for the photographer to either over tighten or under tighten because unlike a bayonet mount, there isn't any click or any locking mechanism to tell the photographer to that the lens has been secured properly. This square piece is sensed by the camera body so that it knows exactly where is the starting point that you should start measuring the angular distance between the square point and the rectangular point. The rectangular piece engages with another feeler lever which is able to convey the information of how many stop down from the maximum aperture the photographer has selected from the lens. When you turn the aperture ring, you will cause this rectangular lever to push and pull on the feeler lever and this allows the camera to determine and see what is the change in angular distance between the square piece and this particular rectangular piece. I'll give an example of how this works in the camera. Let's say the photographer has selected an aperture of f4. f4 coincidentally for this lens is about two stops from the brightest aperture. Now when the photographer meters, the camera knows that hey, the amount of light entering the camera right now is actually when the lens is at its widest. But I can sense that the photographer would like to stop down the lens by two stops. Therefore, with a bunch of resistors and other uh, electronic components, I'm going to send uh, and signal to the photographer to select a shutter speed that allows and compensate for this loss in two stops of light. So now the photographer is able to select the correct shutter speed and then he can proceed to wind the camera and take the picture. I'll give a demonstration of how the flow actually works. Simply take a look through your viewfinder, focus and compose, then select the aperture that you would like to use, select the shutter speed because the camera is able to compensate for the difference in the open uh, aperture, wind your camera and then take your picture. Notice that when I was taking the picture, the camera is constantly towards on my eye level. I didn't have to fiddle with aperture rings or push certain levers in order to be able to perform my meter. So all these steps is able to be reduced down to a very simplified workflow for the photographer. It's something we take for granted actually today, but this is what is known as open aperture metering. Because throughout the entire metering process, the aperture never needs to be stopped down when the photographer is ready to take the picture. So all the photographer simply have to do is take a look through, focus and compose, select the aperture and shutter speed while taking a look through the meter to make sure it's proper, wind the camera and then take the picture. Very simplified workflow and it's something that we take for granted today. Keep in mind that this is not the only solutions that is available to offer open aperture metering and other uh, features that we have seen in this video today. Many manufacturers in the past actually introduced in various other uh, methods to be able to offer these capabilities on their camera body while still maintaining the M42 lens mount. I've only today shown you what Pentax have decided to do with their particular style in the Spotmatic series of cameras. 
the nice thing about these Pentax lenses is actually they do try to maintain compatibility with older camera bodies. If you are using the very basic cameras with only the simple vanilla M42 lens mount, set this camera's uh, lens to the manual switch and you will see that the camera behaves exactly or similarly to those older lenses. So you can use this particular modern lens on the older camera bodies. Likewise, if you were to mount an older lens onto this modern Pentax Sportmatic F with all these bells and whistles, in most cases, the lens can simply just place into the camera body and be mounted successfully. The only difference is that you don't have much of the modern features like open aperture metering or uh, automatic diaphragm features. Thank you so much for watching this particular video. I do hope that this video actually demonstrates uh, some of the ingenious solutions used by Pentax in their M42 lens mount. And I do hope that this uh, camera demonstration has allows for a greater appreciation of some of the special features that we take for granted today, such as open aperture meter or automatic stop down for lenses. It's kind of ironic because with all these additional bells and whistles implemented on the lens mount, uh, many of these M42 lens cameras end up losing some compatibility with one another. So the universal uh, no nomenclature on this particular lens mount doesn't seem to be that universal anymore. Anyways, I hope you have enjoyed this video as much as I did. Uh, please uh, don't forget to uh, ask any questions that you have in the comments down below and I'll try my best to answer them. And if I made any mistakes, do feel free to comment as well so that I can make some uh, uh, corrections and keep in mind for future videos. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.